now we're going to try and make a small one that I'm going to attempt to attach to a water whistle. Let's we'll see what kind of time I have. So, a small amount of clay. Compress it open. Give it a little pinch. Yeah, nice and thick right there. All right, now I'm going to just close it up. Water, smooth it out. Compression, compression, compression. Right, I'm gonna just shape this and try and see what I can do. So the hole through, pack the little plug that at the bottom. Just gonna use a razor knife. I'm puffing it here. I'm gonna create a triangle as if it's pointing a triangle at me. I don't want to slice down too deep because I want to stay in the wall, so now I've got that. Take my tool like this and I'm going to slide it across. Carefully. It's a little wet. So see I'm peeling that little piece off right there. These are great for the little miniature whistles. Okay. Let's have a little mini whistle. I'm going to be placing this right there. Then I'm going to put hold my finger here and I'm going to push it across the hole. I don't want it to come out too high, but I don't want to go so low that the worst thing you can do is let that ramp, looking at the time, that ramp stays in the thickness of the wall. I like to use the long popsicle stick because this is moist and gets a little sticky so I can go down to this end. Then I do what I call the windshield wiper wash. Not heavily. You don't want to be aggressive, you know. Pack that end in. Now when I pull it out, I want it nice and clean. Because the clay was a little wet, you can probably see the hole is a little funky. So I'm going to redrill the hole very carefully. Nicey nice. Pack that into the back wall, right? Because you don't want that, that little plug popping back up and clogging your hole. Bang. Got it. Now, this opening is very, very tight. You can probably see a little air coming through there, right there. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I think I can get a little bit more air in there, which means the whistle will be a little bit more dramatic. Usually there's a little goober of clay that pops out right there. So one thing, when you pull it out, a lot of times it pulls out and your arm kind of swings up like the elbow because the elbow, you know, the way your arm moves. So as you pull it out, try and perfectly straight. Dang. It's a little potato. Now I've also once I know this works, I could cut this when it's a little stiffer, cut this off, and then add a long tube to it. You saw that in one of the videos uh, from the Peruvian video. Actually, they were Incas, I believe. Those were the Incas. Um, I can make a long opening, cavern, you know, cavernous volume, attach it to this, and then my notes will be down here like a, a, like a flute. I've also done these before where I've kept the chamber opened on the back end. I've taken a stick that's been the same side as the tube itself. Then it becomes a slide trombone. Like that. That might be easy one. I might try that one for you. That's, that's the one, maybe the next one I'll do. So I'm not going to put any notes in this. Now just to review. Staying in the wall, very important for your shaft. For your air shaft. If you have a problem and it's not whistling, the two adjustments are I touch that down a littlest bit so the air strikes this edge. Sometimes if the clay is super wet when I plunge through, 
It's very clean on the outside, but it's very erupted on the inside. So sometimes very carefully you have to go inside the hole and clean out the edge of the hole to get all of, I call them like little stalactites, like I'm, pull, I'm pulling a little goobery clay out of there. At like a 30 degree angle, see I'm taking some of that clay out. And what that's doing is, it's instead of the air having to come across and take a 90 degree angle to go down, I'm created a wedge shape in that inner wall. So as the clay comes across, it dives into the hole. See that? So you get a little bit more air into the piece. Let's just see if a note will work. Okay, then get that on.